Hello, and welcome to the Autumn Exhibition on our proposed master plan for the redevelopment of the Elsham Centre, Peckham. My name is Mara Chisholm and I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at Barclay Home. I'm here today with my colleagues, who you may have already met from some of our consultation events or from coming here to the consultation hub. Hi there, I'm Jacob Dunn from Barclay. I'm Tom Anthony from Barclay. I'm Alan Shingler from Shepherd Robson. And I'm Tom Kyle from Shepherd Robson. We're really excited to launch this next phase of consultation with you, showing how your valuable feedback over the last year has been used to inform the proposed master plan. Our objectives for this round of consultation are to share the proposed master plan with you, hear your views on the public open spaces, landscaping, and potential new connections and routes, and get your feedback on the non-residential uses, such as commercial and retail opportunities. So grab a notebook, a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and hear from our team. We appointed the design team at the beginning of the year and have since been consulting with local residents, businesses, and community groups to develop these de development principles, which we shared with you at the last consultation. We've been working closely with Shepherd Robson as architect and lead designer. They have been supported by Peckham-based architects, Darren Farmer and Felix and Merlin, and the wider professional team to deliver on these principles. Throughout the year, we've been working hard to engage with a number of key stakeholders, community groups, neighbours and the wider community to ensure that you all have an opportunity to join the conversation about the future of the Elsham Centre. To date, we've opened our community hub here in the Elsham Centre. We've launched our dedicated consultation website, We've held a number of pop-up sessions and consultation events in and around the Elsham Centre. We've knocked on the doors of around 500 homes in the local area. We've sent out almost 13,000 newsletters. We've engaged with a number of community groups and key stakeholders. We've supported community events with Penn people and partnered on the Peckham Festival. And we've held school engagement activities with Cherry Garden School and Harris Academy. Once you've heard from the team and have reviewed our plans, please do take a moment to share your thoughts with us by filling out one of the surveys or coming along to one of our events. More information about how you can do this will be shared at the end of this talk. Thank you. Uh, the site has been allocated for redevelopment by Southwark Council since 2014 as part of the then Peckham and Nunhead Area Action Plan. This has been carried through into the recently adopted new Southwark plan adopted earlier this year, which identifies sites within the borough which are suitable, available and deliverable to assist Southwark in meeting some of London's growth targets, such as housing. Our site includes the Ailsham Centre and Morrisons, alongside the car park and petrol station, but does not include the TfL bus stand. The feedback that we have received from you so far, as well as feedback from Southern Council, the GLA and TfL, has helped us curate a proposal which we think will deliver a thriving new quarter that will complement Peckham as a vibrant town centre. This board summarises some of the headlines we expect the development to deliver, and I'll now hand you over to Shepherd Robson, who will talk you through the design detail. Thank you, Jacob. We are delighted to be involved in this exciting project working to try and find the right solution for Peckham that embraces the opportunities that this, this location has to offer. We invite your engagement and we look forward to hearing your comments and ideas that may further inform our designs. This image is a conceptual view of how we could create a new threshold into the new development from Rye Lane. The Jones and Higgins building to the left, immediately to the right of that, potentially providing a new community building at the entrance to this new development. In addition, we're introducing a new retail street, which will extend the retail from Rye Lane. Within the heart of the development, it's also important that we provide new public landscape space, providing new courtyards, providing a linear park, we're in a retail route with a variety of spaces that enhance the pedestrian experience and the enjoyment of those that visit and live within this development. The intent and ambition is to create a vibrant, lively space that is complemented by the existing, existing neighbourhood 
providing a new destination at the heart of Peckham for the local community. In addition to that, along Rye Lane, we would seek to widen the streets by six metres. This allows us to improve bus routes, cycle routes, and the pedestrian environment as you move north-south along this route. Finally, by pushing the development back on Rye Lane, it allows us to reveal and celebrate the heritage assets that already exist, both the bank building in the foreground and the Jones and Higgins building in the distance of this sketch on the right-hand side. I'll now hand over to Tom, who will explain the scheme in a little bit more detail. Thank you. So this slide shows some of the public spaces and green spaces within the site. So by creating a pedestrian friendly environment, we hope we can introduce lots of nature into the site with trees, uh, plants and lawns. We want to encourage biodiversity, improve air quality and create a, a, a green nature inspired spaces within the site. So there's going to be a variety of spaces as well. We're considering squares, streets, a courtyard, lanes, and a yard. Um, so to create a real variety of character. The largest green space is a, a linear park, which will run north-south through the site, connecting Hanover Park to the bus stand. And within that, there'll be places for people to sit in the sunshine and, 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 and relax, but also places for children to play. The ground floor, we want it to be really active to have lots of exciting uses for the whole community to enjoy. So I'm gonna take you through some of those spaces. So first of all, number one is Rye Lane, and we, we're hoping to re-provide the, the retail that's there. We see Rye Lane as an important retail destination. Secondly, as Alan described, a pavilion building, a, a building which is not residential, it's, it's gonna contain different uses. Um, we're hoping it could include workspace, but also the rooftop, there's an opportunity to have a, a viewing platform, allowing people to take in great views of the city skyline and also the local conservation area. Number three is the retail street. So we, we're hoping to bring that retail character into the site and take you all the way up to number four, which is the new Morrison store. Number five is the courtyard in the center of the site. This is a slightly quieter space, but it's activated by Number six, which is uh, a larger retail unit and um, possibly a leisure use, but it's flexible at this stage. But we think that this can also be an anchor or a draw to bring people into the site. Now, our design approach has been formed by lots of different influences. Um, we have to take into consideration a whole load of different constraints on the site. It's a town centre location and it has important considerations. We've broken it down to these three themes, I suppose. First of all, um, we have to consider how our buildings relate to the conservation area and also to the, the immediate neighbours. We want to be considerate to the heights of those uh, historic buildings around us and our buildings will form an important backdrop to those buildings. Secondly, there's some important views um, from local, uh, local places as well as further afield. So we need to make sure that our buildings don't compromise some of those key uh, heritage assets, but also those longer views such as One Tree Hill from the south of the borough. And thirdly, um, this site is a town centre location. And as a result, we think it's an appropriate location for tall buildings. They can be used to define the town centre location and mark those key public spaces that we've described. We think that it's important that there's a variety of scales of buildings on the site. So that it's, an, it's a composition of different scales. And we want to make sure that the position of those tall buildings avoids the key views, but also doesn't overshadow neighbours. So having worked on this for quite a long time and tested many, many options, we also have spoken to Southwark Council and taken into consideration their views. And we have, we have this approach at the moment, which is um, to, first of all, try to keep the scale around the edges of the site as low as we can to respect the neighboring properties and to create a scale of development that seems appropriate. So um, McCarroll Road, Hanover Park and Rye Lane, 
we, we re restrict the heights of the buildings around those edges, as well as to the north, which is the backdrop to the conservation area. And then as you move into the center of the site, the, um, the buildings rise in height uh, to, a, to a taller buildings, which sit towards the center and to the north of the site. Now we've made lots of models, both on the computer and physical models too, and we'll be able to show you some of the design development that's taken place uh, when you come to the exhibitions. Um, and we're, we're really looking forward to having these conversations with you about the, um, about the, the, the amassing of the scheme. Um, but this is where we are at the moment, and we think this is the most appropriate arrangement for, for the buildings on the site. So I will hand back to Jacob now, who will describe the phasing of the development. Uh, thank you, Tom. Um, we've approached the development in three phases, um, keeping, keeping Morrison's uh, open and operational throughout. Um, so starting on the, on the east in orange um, is, is planned to be the first phase, which will be um, the new Morrison store, keeping the existing one open. Um, once, we've, once we've finished that Morrison store, we'll then uh, move them into that store, um, unlocking the second phase of, of the site. Um, and then third and finally, we, we, we plan uh, for the third phase to be the, the Eltrum Centre uh, along Rye Lane. Thank you all so much for taking the time to hear from our team today. Your feedback on the proposed master plan is really important as we continue to develop our proposals. Once we have captured all of your thoughts from this round of consultation, we hope to share an updated master plan incorporating your feedback early in the new year. Remember, you're always welcome to pop into a, pop in to see us here at the consultation hub or to join us at some of the upcoming consultation events that we're hosting. We really hope that you're able to encourage your friends, family and neighbours to pop along to, to ensure that your voice is heard. Join the conversation about the future of the Ashman Centre today. Thank you for joining us. Bye.